Hello, I'm Courtney, what's up, and welcome to Book Talk. Today I'm going to be discussing the third and final book in the Winner's Curse trilogy, The Winner's Kiss by Marie Rutowski, and I literally just finished this like 10 minutes ago, and oh my goodness, my heart. I am just filled with so much joy and happiness right now because I loved every second of this book. I thought this was so beautifully written and the story was just so captivating like Marie just kept writing all these plot points in and I was like oh my gosh this is amazing and you know it's so rare now to find a finale book that's actually really good and like oh my gosh this was one of the best books ever but this book The Winner's Kiss was so well done this is such a great finale book and Everything was just wrapped up beautifully and I honestly feel like it wasn't really rushed. Everything just flowed smoothly and I loved it. I love it when books are like that, especially finale books. And being that this is the third and final book in the series, if you have not read this book yet and you do not want to be spoiled, I will leave right now because I'm about to go into some spoilers. So, bye not spoiling people! Okay. So in the winner's kiss, let's talk about the beginning because I will say the beginning was a little rough for me at first because Erin was being all like, oh yeah, I've moved on from Castro, like, she was a wound that's now healed. And now whenever I think about her, I'm fine, I'm great. And that was very annoying. And you know, when he mentioned at one point about how he threw the dagger at the end of the winner's crime into the ocean, I was like, boy, you're gonna regret that what she did because then he made a da another dagger for her later on and I was like, would you look at that? And then we have poor Kestrel who goes to the work camps in the beginning and even though I hated that whole section, especially when she got the key from the senator because Varix sent the senator to give her the key and you know, she escaped, she got free and I was like, oh my gosh. And this happened at like 40 pages in and I was like, whoa like she's getting out early and I was like wait a minute it can't be this simple because it's never that simple at books and it wasn't because she got caught and then she got whipped and I was like oh and then she, she ate the food and drank the water with the drug the whole drug situation how the food and water they have at this camp is drugged and it kind of makes you just forget everything and the only thing that you really know is work and the drug and how you just crave for it and how she was she was pouring out her soup and not drinking her water because she wanted to remember but then after she got whipped she was kind of just like you know screw it I need this drug and Kestrel loses her memory she forgets basically everything and when Aaron finds out that Kestrel is dead, because that's what the Emperor wanted to do, just spread that rumor that she was dead, you know, he was like, uh uh, she's not dead. Because that messenger guy she gave moths to found Aaron, and I was just like, thank, thank you, kind sir, for doing your job. And he told her about, he told him about the moths and that girl, and he was just like, oh my gosh, that's Kestrel, she's not dead. She's at the camp and he went to the tundra and he found her. He found her. And then first words to him were, who are you? And just, oh, that broke me. Like it broke him because he just realized that that drug has already affected her so much where she now knows nothing. Throughout the whole entire story, she's trying to piece things together. And even though I do hate the fact that she did lose her memory at the same time I appreciate this because this played a key factor into the story since she didn't remember him or anything about what's happened I feel like her losing her memory has now made her a better person for her not to redeem herself but I don't know it, it just made her better I like the Kestrel now at the very end of the book I like this Kestrel because Kestrel in the Winter's Crime was lying all the time and making all these mistakes and now, you know, she loses her memory and everything and I just, I like who Kestrel is now. She's so brave and strong and I just, I like this Kestrel better, honestly. And Aaron, I, I think Aaron does too. I think we can all say that this Kestrel that 
forms after she loses her memory is a much better Kestrel. But moving on from the beginning, Aaron and Kestrel, oh my gosh, they cost me all the feels. I, you know, have been shipping them for like so long and I just want them to be together and then she loses her memory and she doesn't remember anything that happened between them. She puts pieces together and how she had to ask Aaron stories and everything. I was feeling many feels and how Aaron, like, oh my gosh, when they got to his house and he noticed her scars on her back because of the web and he was like, oh my gosh, I asked if you got hurt and blah, blah, blah. He was all angry and then Sarsen was like, dude, like calm down, leave. He just always wanted to be with her and I was like, dude, I know you want to be with her, but like, you're kind of freaking her out. She doesn't remember you. This, this isn't helping. If you want her to like you, then like, give her some space. If she wants to talk to you, then like, she'll come and find you. And oh, the beginning was very, very stressful. I really liked the last 200 pages because yesterday I had like the ultimate reading day where I read like over 200 pages. It was pretty amazing. And oh, there was just so many feels yesterday because, oh my gosh, all... The kiss scenes between Aaron and Kestrel. <gasps> oh my gosh, that one scene where they found the mosaic and she realized then that she loved him and she was like, why didn't I have the courage to tell him how I feel? And I was like, oh my gosh, feelings, feelings. This book has caused me all the feels, okay? There's so many feels between Aaron and Kestrel. Stressful. This All, all these books cause me stress, especially this one, especially with the whole war situation the whole war was very interesting and the battles were so epic like the one on the beach was <laughs> the most stressful because i thought Aaron was going to die but he didn't it was fine and then later on when she, kestrel she put the black powder from the bush to the wagon and then exploded oh my gosh that was the coolest i mean terrible because like people could have died but it was still awesome how Varix was there oh my gosh I love seeing him because I I honestly love Varix and I wish we could have seen him more and when oh, at the end when he was trapped in that the archer was gonna kill him and then Roshar saved him I was like thank you also speaking of Roshar I feel like I didn't really talk about him in my winner's crime book talk but I love Roshar and then when he was like you know Roshar and Kestrel were hanging out a lot and Roshar was like the heir yeah um I don't like women that way and I was like this guy just became my favorite and I just I wanted Roshar to end up with a guy I just kept waiting for him to find his bae and I hope he finds love because Roshar is truly amazing where would we be without that guy for real though for real for real like most everyone would be dead most people would be dead without Roshar because he's a genius and I love his sarcasm and he is amazing 10 out of 10 stars but the end I'm, man I just keep thinking about Aaron and Kestrel especially that scene where they were in the tent and then oh my gosh they did it and it was just so cute and then on the next morning Roshar like saw their faces and he was like I want my dead back Ah, that was really funny and then oh my gosh the very the very last battle was stressful because it kept going back from like Aaron to Kestrel because Kestrel and Risha went to the Emperor and they were playing that game of Bind of Stain. Oh my gosh I like I've never been stressed out over reading a game before and how there were the marked tiles and I was kind I was kind of confused by the whole marked tiles situation and how Kestrel, she never picked any up, but the Emperor did. And the Emperor won the game. And I was like, this isn't good. Like, he won and now he's going to take everything away from us. But then he, like, started spazzing. And then Kestrel was like, oh, yeah, I actually didn't lie when I say I was going to murder you. Because, like, those marked tiles you touched are poisonous. It had the numbing stuff, that worm stuff. You know how Kestrel wanted that numbing stuff from, like, the ring? That was the stuff on the cards. And I was like, genius. Kestrel is so smart, by the way. I, I love her 
strategies. She's truly amazing. And then the Emperor dies. He's not really murdered. He's murdered by the cards. That's tough on the cards. And then going back to Arrow in the battle, he, he has his like showdown with the general and the whole entire time throughout the book, I was very conflicted whether or not I wanted the general to die. Cause like, yes, this is Kestrel's father, but at the same time, this is a guy who betrayed Kestrel and told the emperor about the letter. Like he chose his country over his own daughter. So I was kind of like, you know, if the general dies, I'll be fine. But if the general doesn't die, I guess I'll be fine. So they're having their showdown. His arm gets cut off. The general's arm gets cut off, which, ooh, that was, ah. And Aaron, he could have killed him. He could have. He, he was so close to doing it, but he didn't. And how later on when he finds Kestrel and he, he tells her everything and he was like, did I like do the right thing? Blah, blah. And he was just like, he didn't know if he was regretting not killing him. He was just all over the place. And Kestrel was like, no, you didn't do the wrong thing. Like, this is all fine. And when she went to visit her dad in the tent and he, I just, I couldn't help for my heart to break when he was like, you know, I can't ask for forgiveness because like, I, he, he basically admits that he doesn't like deserve forgiveness and instead asks for mercy and how Kestrel was like, you know, you tried to make me live in your world and now I want you to live in mine. Powerful stuff, man. And then I loved that dinner with the tiger, how Roshar was like all drunk and then I just loved all the little moments between Aaron and Kestrel, how they woke up in the middle of the night to go to her piano and they finally have their duet together. He sings and she plays and it was just, it was so beautiful. I was smiling the whole time and when I realized what they were doing, I was just like, oh my gosh, this is just so beautiful and it was just, ah, uh, the ending was so happy. It was just filled with happiness because they had been fighting for each other so long and now they get to be together and live happily ever after and it was just so wonderful and I want to read 50 more books about Aaron Kestrel. I want to read them get married, have kids because I just love this world and I want to see what happens now. What's going to happen to Haran? Who's going to be the new Emperor? There's still so many questions. There should be a spin-off series to this. I sincerely think Marie should write more books in this world because I need some answers. Like who is going to be the new Emperor? Who is going to take over? What's going to happen to Haran? Is the Easter Empire going to take over? Who knows? We don't know what's going to happen. So that's why there should be another series and have Aaron and Kestrel be the main characters because I love them to death. But I think that's all I have to say. Overall, this was a great finale book. Definitely one of my favorite books of 2017 because this book was just so great and plus it is so beautiful and I'm gonna hate that I have to return this tomorrow. I don't want to return it. I want to keep it forever. But that my friends was my book talk on the winner's curse. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'm Courtney and I'll see you all next time with a new video soon so I will see you then. So bye! Yo!